hello everyone welcome back to medical digest and in today's video i have brought to you a very special topic and it's quite a confusing topic known as preaxial border versus post axial border and in this video we will be exclusively diving into the details of what is exactly preaxial border and post axial border and the difference between these two borders so let me just read out a few things for you and then we will proceed ahead when it comes to preaxial and post axial border they describe that when a flexor or extensor compartment of the limb meet during fetal limb bud development these borders are also conveniently marked out by the veins so what does this a uh, statement explain it to you that where the flexor and the extensor compartment where the flexor and the extensor compartment meet during the fetal limb development as for now for understanding purposes let me make it clear that this is the flexor aspect of the hand and this is the flexor aspect of lower limb same here this is the extensor aspect of upper limb and this is the extensor aspect of lower limb so where are these two aspects meeting they are either meeting on the lateral border or inside the medial border so this you can consider as lateral and this pink color dotted lines you can consider as medial all right so when these two surfaces or compartments are meeting are termed as preaxial or postaxial border you can uh, imagine that the lateral aspect of your hand is your preaxial border and the medial aspect of your hand is the postaxial border the anterior aspect of your hand is the flexor compartment and the posterior aspect of your hand is the extensor compartment hope this is pretty much clear to you but now when we come to the exact preaxial border and the postaxial border i want to explain a few things to you first of all i want to explain you certain few things that is rotation of the limbs during embryological development because this is important in understanding the borders of the upper limb and lower limb and how they are connected towards the formation of preaxial and postaxial borders so when it comes to the rotation of limb during 7th week of embryological development the upper and the lower limbs rotate in opposite directions this is quite important the upper and the lower limbs rotate in opposite direction how the upper limb rotates 90 degrees laterally and lower limb rotates 90 degrees medially that is this upper limb rotates 90 degrees laterally and the lower limb rotates 90 degrees medially so what does this rotation causes the extensor muscle comes to line the posterior aspect of the upper limb and the extensor muscles comes to lie in the anterior aspect of the lower limb hope this is pretty much clear until now now when it comes to the third thumb and big toe when it comes to the thumb and big toe thumb comes to lie laterally as you can as, uh, imagine yourself being in an anatomical position i have already explained what is anatomical position in my previous videos do check out my previous videos if you want to understand this topic quite well so in anatomical position as you can imagine that your thumb is placed laterally but when it comes to the big toe of your lower limb it it is on the medial surface 
so what you need to understand is upper limb rotates laterally and this creates the extensor muscle to lie in the posterior aspect and thumb comes laterally when it comes to the lower limb they rotate 90 degrees medially so the extensor muscle lies on the anterior aspect and the big toe comes to lie in the medial surface here you can see that this is the thumb and it is placed laterally and this is the greater toe and it is placed medially so this is what is important to understand uh, why because when it comes to preaxial border when it comes to preaxial border of the upper limb the outer border is the preaxial border and when it comes to the lower limb the inner border is the preaxial border so as you can see this pink color line traced here this is getting traced towards the inner border of the lower limb so the outer border of the upper limb and the inner border of the lower limb are the preaxial borders exactly opposite the inner border of the upper limb and the outer border of the lower limb is the post axial borders when it comes to seeing in the diagram this blue colored line traced here is the post axial border of the upper limb and it is traced towards the inner border and when it comes to the blue line tracing here this is the post axial border of the lower limb and it is getting traced towards the outer surface of the body hope this is pretty much clear until now now coming towards the this diagram this diagram also shows us the development of the preaxial and postaxial borders as you can see these are different dermatomes of the upper limb and these are different dermatomes of the lower limb so whatever it is here is concerned to the upper limb and whatever is here is concerned So as you can see here these are the dermatomes of, of the upper limb and these are the dermatomes of the lower limb. When it comes to the axis this is important axis called as ventral axial line and this axial line is present on the anterior aspect of the upper limb. And when it comes to the ventral axial line it is present here. And it is present towards the posterior aspect of lower limb. So, as you can see that this is the preaxial border which is getting corresponded to the outer border of the upper limb. Hence, the outer border of the upper limb is the preaxial border. When it comes to the postaxial border, as you can see that it is resembling the inner border of the lower limb hence the inner border of the lower limb is the post axial border when it comes to the preaxial border in the lower limb this is the preaxial border in the lower limb and it is getting traced towards the inner aspect actually it should be shown anteriorly but here it is shown posteriorly for understanding purpose you say that it is getting traced towards the inner aspect of the lower limb hence the inner border is the preaxial border and when it comes to the postaxial border the outer border is the postaxial border in the lower limb hope this is this diagram is pretty much clear now coming towards the actual part of the preaxial border and postaxial border which uh, explains everything uh, now coming towards the preaxial border it is also known as cranial border and it demarcates the portion of the limb bird that lies cranial to the axis of the limb now what is cranial cranial means towards the cranium so what i have explained it earlier is nothing but here only that is where it lies the preaxial border lies on the radial aspect of the upper limb and the tibial aspect of the lower limb it is marked out by cephalic vein the radial aspect of the upper limb is marked out by cephalic vein i'll explain this everything in the diagrams which i have collected first read this first let's read this and the tibial aspect of the lower limb which is marked out by the great saphenous vein now what is the clinical relevance the preaxial polydactyly involves additional digit on the first digit of the hand or the first digit of the foot that is the greater toe of the foot all right 
so as you can see that this is the clinical relevance that preaxial polydactyly is something which we need to understand and that is for the reason we are understanding what is preaxial border and the postaxial border now coming towards the postaxial border it demarcates the portion of the limb bud that lies caudal to the axis of the limb so what it shows where it is that it is on the ulnar aspect of the upper limb and is and it is marked out by the basilic vein and when it comes to the fibular aspect of the lower limb it is marked out by the small saphenous vein so what is the clinical relevance as usual when it comes to preaxial border it is preaxial polydactyly and now when it comes to the postaxial border it is postaxial polydactyly so it is the additional digit on the ulnar side of the hand or the lateral side of the fifth toe now when it comes to the polydactyly here is the clear cut uh, diagram which shows the preaxial central and postaxial polydactyly we are concerned with the preaxial polydactyly and postaxial polydactyly here so this is the preaxial polydactyly which shows the additional digit on the first uh, finger of the body that is the on the radial side of the body and this is the postaxial polydactyly which shows additional digit on the ulnar side of the body <coughs> sorry or the uh, medial side of the body inner side of the body and this is the diagram which shows this is the diagram of preaxial polydactyly <coughs> and this is the diagram of postaxial polydactyly now what we have understood here in this part that is the radial aspect of upper limb marked by cephalic vein tibial aspect of lower limb marked by great saphenous vein and this part that is the ulnar aspect of upper limb marked by basilic vein and fibular aspect of lower limb marked by small saphenous vein will be explained here completely in this set of diagrams so as you can see here clearly that in this diagram this is the radius bone so anything towards here will be the radial aspect and this is the ulna bone anything which is here will be the ulnar aspect so radial aspect of upper limb nothing but corresponds to the outer border of the upper limb and ulnar aspect of the upper limb nothing but corresponds to the inner border of the upper limb hence this makes it the preaxial border and this makes it the postaxial border now when it comes to the vein tracing as you can see that this is the cephalic vein and how is it getting traced it is getting towards the radial aspect of the upper limb hence it is the preaxial vein of the upper limb and when it comes to the basilic vein where it is getting traced it is getting towards the ulnar aspect or the inner aspect of the upper limb hence it is the postaxial vein it corresponds to the postaxial vein now when it comes to tibia and fibula as you can see these both diagrams show it quite well now tibia is towards the inner border of the upper limb and fibula is towards the outer border of the upper limb nothing but here the same this is the fibula which is towards the outer border of the upper limb and tibia which is towards the inner border of the upper limb so inner border of the upper limb corresponds to the preaxial border and the outer border of the upper limb corresponds to the postaxial border now when it comes to the vein tracing of the lower limb here you can see that this is the great saphenous vein which is getting traced towards the tibial aspect of the lower limb as i have shown here that this is the tibia and this is the great saphenous vein exactly tracing the tibial aspect of the lower limb hence this makes it getting traced towards the inner border of the lower limb hence making it as the preaxial vein now when it comes to the lesser saphenous vein as you can see that this is getting traced towards the fibular aspect or the outer aspect of the lower limb hence making it moreover towards the postaxial part of the lower limb this completes the entire topic of preaxial versus postaxial uh, borders of the upper limb just to summarize everything just remember one thing preaxial border nothing but means the outer border of upper limb and inner border of lower limb postaxial border means nothing but inner border of upper limb and outer border of lower limb that's it so i have uh, tried my level best to 
summarize all the things and make you understand this topic quite well uh, please do subscribe to my channel if you want to really appreciate my efforts as it really keeps me uh, as it really helps me keep motivated also share it with maximum of your peers your co medico friends and uh, do uh, stay tuned with my channel to see such awesome content and yes then until then see you in my next video take care bye bye